Okay, let me briefly go over it. In fact, I have to go briefly over it uh, because there wasn't much material in May because I had so much problems in Iceland uh, with the transmission. Okay, so what was uh, May all about? Well, it was about this. Okay, here's the summary. Okay, let me start with the summary so that we're all on the same page. Holy geometry. Some call it sacred geometry. What's sacred Sounds about awesome. it? Yeah, it's, it really does. Amazing. Holy geometry has no place in science. What is it? Well, here it is. I mean, I'll put a picture so that you know what holy geometry, sacred geometry is all about. It okay? not be a tesseract. No, here it is, okay? Here's people praying to the holy geometry. Some people will look at these and they see meaning in them. The one on the right, blue one there, uh, well, that's the Mandelbrot set, okay? They, uh, if you keep expanding upon it, you see more and more of the same thing over and over and over again. It's a question of observe. It's an observer-related phenomenon where you focus closer and closer and closer and you, you get these patterns that are supposedly mathematically created, okay? Again, nothing to do with physics, but the, people get hypnotized by these patterns and they say oh i'm gonna pray they don't pray to god they pray to the cube yeah it's like isn't this essentially <laughs> numerology yeah it is in a way and they call it holy geometry i'm sorry sacred geometry you know and uh so we don't care too much about that okay not part of I science mean, they use these things in like aesthetics too like the golden ratio yeah and they're making things like that yeah and things people that get are things that are appeasing to the human nature i guess i don't know or they look at you know three sixes and they put it on the head of the devil or whatever i mean you know they have all these Weird things. These are superstitions. That's all they are. Okay, uh, next issue. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, what is it? A uh, black, well, yeah, praying to the cube instead of the cross. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, a black hole is not an object. Okay. Oh, oh. What is a black hole? It's a singularity surround, which is a con uh, concept, a mathematical concept. It's known as a singularity. No volume, uh, infinite density. It's a point. What is a point? Zero dimensional location. Okay, etc. Non dimensional location, actually. Okay, so uh, black hole is a singularity surrounded by an event horizon, a region of influence, you could call it, okay? A concept surrounded by a concept. There you go, uh, to summarize, right? <laughs> Therefore, it does not qualify as a figure for the purposes of geometry. It's not an object, it's not a thing. Aristotle, There's no such thing. Aristotle thing. wouldn't like, wouldn't like the black hole. Uh, and Aristotle, uh, really followed by Mr. Euclid, let me get that for a second out of here so we can see you. Aristotle followed by Euclid. What did Euclid say? Well, he says that an object is that which has a boundary. And what is a boundary? A boundary is that it ends in an object. Sounds like he's talking about a <laughs> Well, he's talking about a circular. He is, uh, he's got a circular def set of definitions. But that which has a boundary sounds like he was defining it as that which has shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And that is, uh, that is, and uh, if he would have stopped there, he would have been okay. But then he said, well, let me define what shape is. What, let's define what a boundary is. And, and what he says, a boundary is the end of an object, the end of a shape. Well, he's supposed <laughs> to define it. Well, you're not supposed to define shape because, again, and people sometimes have trouble with that, especially people whose religion gets destroyed by the definition of an object, they have a problem with this. What is the problem? The problem is we do not have to define the word shape in science or in physics. What we need to know is the difference between or distinguish between shape, motion, C, touch, mass, volume, which are the, the choices. What, what choice, what criterion are you going to choose to define the word object for the purposes of physics? Are you going to say that which moves, that which has location, uh, that which has mass, that which you can see, that which you can touch? All of the or above. are you, well, yeah, in some you can't see. I mean, I can't see. Uh, some of the above. <laughs> I, can, I cannot see the table that I have in my head. So is the word table an object? Okay, so we have a problem there. Uh, we have to define it in such a way that we uh, enc encompass all objects in the universe, the words that represent objects. And for that, there is only one criterion, and that is shape. You want to know what shape is? Go to a kindergarten and find out. They'll tell you what shape is. The kids will tell you what the difference between a cube and a sphere is. Okay, okay and uh, so let's continue here. The other issue is a uh, quantum electron is not an object. A quantum quark is not an object. A quantum gluon is not an object. If the quantum hydrogen atom is made of electrons, quarks and gluons, quarks and gluons making the proton and the neutron, by the way, then the QM, the quantum mechanics, atom is not an object, is not a figure, is not a part of geometry. But they use the word point. They talk about the, um, uh, what is it, the electron being a point particle, an elementary particle, a fundamental particle, okay? And um, so here is, let me show you that. Here it is. This is the definition that you find out there, okay? What is an electron? Are generally thought to be elementary particles because they have no known components or substructure. They're not made of anything. Right. And what is an elementary particle or fundamental particle? Is a subatomic 
uh, particle with no currently known substructure. It is not composed of other particles. The currently known part, that's for job security. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're, it's, still, it's we're still investigating. investigating. Yeah. <laughs> we're still trying to find uh, what all this stuff is, right? Okay, so this is the problem. The problem is that uh, what do we have uh, today from quantum mechanics? Um, electrons, uh, point particle, elementary particle, fundamental particle. So is the gluon, which is, um, mediates the strong force between quarks, which three of which constitute the proton, also neutrons, by the way, two ups, one down, two downs, one up, whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is, you got three point particles mediated by countless gluons, which are point particles, and what orbits them is a point particle, and they're all zero dimensional, no volume, elementary particles, not made of smaller particles, meaning they're the, the ultimate, you know, that's where the buck stops. That we know of. That we know of. That means it gives them job security to find out what they're made of. Mm -hmm. And for that, they say, well, you need a, an accelerator the size of the orbit of Pluto. So good luck with that whenever we build that one. I don't know how many pesos that's going to cost us. <laughs>